Now, a couple of weeks ago, well, towards the end of last year, to put the right time frame on it, because we are in the new year now, I played a track from an album called Love Breaks the Fall from a man called Mike Brookfield. And judging from the reaction, a lot of you enjoyed it. So messages were sent, and I'm happy to say that sitting opposite me is the self-same Mike Brookfield, complete with guitar and amplifier, and they were plugged in tonight, and uh, he's going to put that to good use shortly. But first of all, here's a track from the album.
Talk the record on Radio Nova. I'm Pat James. That was Love Breaks the Fall, which is the title track of the current album from Mike Brookfield. Good evening, Mike. And evening, thank you Pat. for dropping in. Thanks for having Good me. Good to see you. And uh, I've had this experience once before when Pat Coldrick was in and I was playing a track from his album and he had the guitar there and he played along. So I'm after getting a, a dual performance. I've had you playing on the, uh, the CD and playing live for me as well. That was unique. Thank you so much for uh, that. It's nice to warm up with something it you know. Is. It is. <laughs> Listen, um, we, we've kind of arrived with an album. Okay. And you've been around a while, but you haven't been making albums. This is more or less it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I suppose I've been a musician since I left school, but uh, my, my career has is, is, is kind of zigzagged and ping-ponged all over the place. As in, uh, you know, I, I, I did West End shows. I toured with different artists. I worked a lot with my wife. Um, and worked basically as a, a session guy, kind of freelance player. But I suppose I reached a point a couple of years ago where, you know, I thought it kind of come to a crunch time where I really had to kind of make a decision. If I was going to play music, it really had to be... I, I had to feel passionate about it, and it had to be a vehicle f to be expressive. It couldn't be just something to make money out of, if you know what I mean, like just... Uh, playing the dots, if you know what I mean. I think I'm kind of one of those musicians who who's not satisfied just to play the dots. I want a, a creative career, you know? So a couple of years ago, I, I made that decision, and, and now I'm... It was, it was time to make your own music? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the process of making the, the first album, how long did it take? And did, did you have a backlog of songs that you'd had lying around for years, or did you kind of come to it fresh and say, right, I'm going to write songs for an album? Yeah, I had a lot of material lying around, like, uh, but I think, like most songwriters, you, the last song you wrote is the most, you know, you always think that's the one, you know? So I, I think I recorded a lot of uh, the most recent songs that I'd written, and, and my songwriting had, had developed over the years as well, like, so um, a lot of the songs I was writing maybe a couple of years ago when I started recording was uh, with, these, with these songs, and they were... You know, but they were they were vehicles for me to be expressive with my guitar. Yeah. You know, because I'm a singer, singer songwriter, guitar player, and that's how people know me. So I wanted to include the guitar there. So, you know. And coming around to okay, you look at the background you played in in West End stuff. You've been musical director. You've done all that kind of thing. But are you coming back to the first love? Is the blues where you are, or is where you come from? Yeah. Again, I just wanted to do something that was passionate and heartfelt and honest. You know, and it wasn't, um, I wasn't trying to exploit anything. I just wanted to do something, honestly, while I felt like I had the time and the chance. You know, I didn't have the money. I just kind of, <laughs> it wasn't the right time like that, you know, is the, the recession it's, hit it's and everywhere. everything. Oh, let's record an album in the middle of a recession. <laughs> so it is, it you is. Know? So it was kind of, I, I totally took a chance. And, and luckily, I, I had good support from, uh, you know, friends and family. Uh, so, you know, it came together pretty well, you know. Okay, well, <laughs> while you're here and you have that rather nice guitar sitting on your lap, would you like to make use of it? Yeah. And play us a tune? Yeah, why not? Um, I'll, uh, I've been writing a lot uh, of new stuff recently, but I've written a few, written a few tunes with Eamon Carr, actually, and, uh, and we wrote this tune called Gum Crime. Uh, it's a pretty new tune. Okay. So uh, I'll give that one a whirl. No bother. Uh, we'll live dangerously with it. No. Do, it do a new one. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. This, no is, worries. this is Gum Crime. Still shooting for 
her pocket When she starts feeling hot and tense She said, baby, should you shout at my defense? Yeah. There's war on the streets and there's no place to hide My baby's got a pistol caught by her side It's not Saturday night, that's best for me Gun crime, out of control. <laughs> and that is a new song, as you said. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a brand new song. Yeah, the Eamon Carr from the Horse Lips wrote the lyrics and he sent them over to me and um, I rustled up a bit of a demo on the, uh, on, on the computer and, yeah, we, we came up with that. It's kind of a good, fun track. It's supposed to be a bit tongue-in-cheek. Kind of, it sounds like a serious title, doesn't it, Gun Crime? <laughs> <laughs> it does a bit. But it's, uh, and I suppose it is to a certain degree, but it's like... Choose rock and roll over guns. It's a bit more Tarantino than, <laughs> than you know. And do you find that uh, an enjoyable process, co-writing, when somebody gives you lyrics and you put the music to it? Yeah, it's a, it kind of halves the job, doesn't it? It does, so, yeah, yeah. The workload is easier. <laughs> so, so it's kind of fun from that. Uh, sometimes when you're writing a song on your own, it, it, if it comes quickly, it's great, you know. I've written, I've been in the kitchen and, you know, been making some pasta and written the lyrics and gone to the guitar and suddenly a song has kind of formed and come together really quickly. And other times they can be like, it can be a bit like pulling teeth, you know, it's yeah. a, it can be hard work. So, so when somebody sends you lyrics and you co-write, it can be, you know, it's more of a fun process because you feel like you're halfway there already. And just the, you know, like the bouncing ideas backwards and forwards, I think it's a, an important part of being a, a songwriter, you know, yeah. to experience yeah. that. Well, as well as be open to another input, it yeah, all helps. Yeah, yeah. Especially Eamon Carr. Yeah, well, he knows his stuff, <laughs> he knows, right? stuff, he knows yeah, how to yeah. make records. He does, he, he does. Yeah. And uh, that's not the only song you've written with him. There is more, is there? Yeah, we've written a lot of stuff, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. This is, I don't know if this is top secret. Should I be saying this? Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's out there now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. okay, besides that, you've got a gig coming up. Yeah, um, we've got a few things in the diary. I suppose the, the big one is that we, we've just uh, found out we've, we're going to do Wheelands on the, um, the 6th of April. So uh, we, uh, we've never played Wheelands before, so we want to ram it, you know. So um, that's a date for people's diaries. If you're a blues rock fan and you want to see a dynamic three-piece, you know, rocking three-piece blues band, that's the 6th of um, April. Uh, in Wheelands and then next week we're playing in the hot spot in Greystones and uh, we have a warm up gig for the for the Wheelands now in uh, the uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to it yeah. I won't embarrass Arthur's. you but in Arthur's, Arthur's. Oh, yeah. Arthur's uh, on the 19th of February yeah, Arthur's yeah. is a great little venue yeah it's uh, a lot of great blues bands playing oh there, absolutely yeah. Conal does a great job up there good job I wrote that on the back of my hand there it? you go there you go <laughs> Listen, before we get to the break, we'll take another one from the album and then we'll talk about where you can get the album and all the rest of it. This one is Catfish Missile. I'll press play. Down here the 
Off the regular on Radio Nova, that was Mike Brookfield. Love Breaks the Fall is the name of the album, and that was Catfish Missile. Where can you get the album, Mike? Let's do the business. Uh, you can get it from my website, which is mikebrookfield.com. Um, and Tommy and the Sound Cellar, of course. Um, you know, Tommy's uh, very good to me. <laughs> he, uh, he lets everybody know about my album, and uh, he's... Uh, it's one of the best shops, isn't it? The record shops Absolutely. in the country, if not Absolutely. the best record shop in the country. And you it know? has it has survived so long, you yeah. know. And yeah. it just keeps keeps getting there, you know. And for it's guitar great. music, there's just there's just loads of great stuff in there. Mm. And he's always got something you've never heard of, so you end up walking out with something, you know. He never lets you go empty-handed. That, that's, the, that's part of his plan, I think. <laughs> I just yeah. this has just come in. What do you yeah. think of that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's in it's in Tower Records as well on Dawson Street as well. So, uh, good one. Yeah. And you will it'll be on sale at the gigs, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah, yes. Nice one. Now, the whole thing of, of putting an album together, you know, independently. I had Crow Black Chicken in last week, and they've been doing. They've got two studio albums, a live album, and now they've remastered and reissued their first album on a double record, going back to the old-fashioned way. Yeah. How? You know, is that the way to go, or is is are the are the days of waiting for the label to come knocking on your door, and say, "Here's the advance, get into the studio, and we're going to make you star." Are they gone? Um, I think they probably are. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is very difficult. I know that much myself. I suppose the lads in um, Crow Black Chicken they they um, they do a lot of gigs, so they'll be so selling a lot of. Uh, CDs at gigs, so that it would be definitely, you know, that would be the worth their while d doing vinyl runs and stuff like that. So yeah, well, I think the, the, for for sell selling CDs at gigs is is the best way to go yeah. for the musician at the moment. You know. Well, I I, uh, I, I personally think that they're probably one of the most best value for money bands around. I went to see them yeah, last night and yeah. they played for three hours and it was eight euros in. Yeah. You know, you know, ridiculous. But, you know, the way the whole scene has changed over the years now, and because maybe technology is easier, that people can record and get it all together and release it themselves, yeah. you know. I'm trying to, I try and, I, could, I think it would be easy for me to get depressed <laughs> over it all. So I try to put a positive spin on it and think of it as a filtering process. <laughs> and hopefully that, you know, you're, you're still selling records when other people aren't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping that, you know, as, as um, like when I put this record out, it, I put it out to nobody. My, my, uh, my fan base was zero, you know? And then over a period of months, I started to service it to radio stations and uh, send it out to reviews. And it's just really just, it's taken, you know, six to 12 months nearly just to get the ball rolling yeah. because I'm a one-man show. So I think, I don't think there's ever, ever been a real formula or um, uh, for making a rock and roll success apart from just grafting, you know, going out, doing the gigs, you know, try and tell people confidently you're good. Hopefully they buy into you and, and the music speaks for itself. So, you know. Well, the whole thing is, I suppose, in, in, now this is going to sound a bit oblique, in many ways, musicians are like politicians. You know, a politician will go and ask for your vote. Yeah. And in the same way, a musician will go on stage and play and say, come and see me again or buy my record. Yeah. So you're really putting it out there. There's, yeah. there's no hiding place. No, not at all. No. Not for musicians. There is for politicians, but not for yeah. musicians. I suppose you have, to be, you have to be convincing in what you're singing about as well. You know, for me, I, I, every word needs to count and every note needs to count because I'm not a shredder or anything. You no, know, you're not. And I'm not a pop star. You know what I mean? So it, it's, uh, you know, the, every lyric has to mean something and hopefully connect with somebody, take them on a journey. And the same with the guitar. You hope the guitar does a similar thing where your guitar solo can just kind of maybe, you know, if it puts the chills up someone's spine or, you know, makes somebody want to get up and dance, you know what I mean? You just want to affect people, you know? Mm. I think it's very much from what you're saying there. And getting comparison, I was talking to some friends last night, and we we all attended the Nils Lofgren gig. Oh yeah, in Vicker Street just a while ago. Now Nils has been around for so long, and in in I think you know what I mean. Most American musicians, when they go on stage, it's a performance. Mm. But with some who have been doing it so long, you can see it's a job. Yeah, yeah. But you could see that Nils Lofgren still enjoys it. Oh, yeah. He's... And when he hits the stage, it's it's there and it's, I, I'm your man and I'm going to do this. Well, and, if you look at who his gaffer's been for the last true enough, 20 well, odd years. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He has a, a certain work ethic as well. Yeah. But to see somebody like on stage and just 
playing for the sheer joy of it. Yeah. And it could be the song that he's, he's played how many times before. Mm. Do, you, do you ever find that? Now, I know you're, you're not in the position, you don't have the big song that's yeah. been an anthem for years. Yeah. But are there certain songs that, you know, you have a certain affection for that, you know, you really love to play on stage, play live? Yeah, well, there's a song on the album called Peace for Joe, which I wrote about a, a friend who died recently, you know. That's, so the, first, that's the one track I played, when, the first track I played from the album, that's the one I played for it, because I remember listening to the album and I enjoyed the album, and that came up, and I said, that's so different. Mm. You know, that it, and it seemed, you know, maybe personal. And, yeah, uh, you and know, I wanted to ask you about that, and I'm glad you brought it up now. Yeah, and, and, uh, and some, some people have said that, that at the moment that is the signature tune, that's what people expect you to play, mm. you know. And, uh, and every time I play it, I try to uh, uh, connect with people, I try and think about the person, and then hopefully the way that you play... You know, there's a there's a kind of a spirit or something that kind of uh, comes from from that. You yeah. know, so um, you know, yeah. I mean, with the that tune is kind of like an emotionally driven tune. You know, where you're playing expressively. I'm not trying mm. to be clever or anything. It's mm. just all about expression. And then there's other tunes on the album, and uh, that we do live, which are really just purely to leave blood on the floor. You know, yeah, yeah. we're there to rock and roll and show yeah. people a good time. Yeah. So it's interesting that you said Niels Lofgren because I'd be a huge fan of Niels Lofgren and and Springsteen and that and and the way that they put the shows on yeah. and the professional way that they do it where it's you know that famous quote is part political rally part party part yeah. you know but it's still know. all rock and roll it is yeah i mean yeah. the one thing I, I i like about springsteen and people like that and lofgren and all that you can see that you know it's not just a case of oh we're on stage and hello cleveland yeah is that where we are tonight are you sure you know they, they really know their audience yeah and that that that's one thing that really impressed me with, with nils when he's in dublin he knew exactly where he was and he knew his audience mm. Yeah. There's a kind of a concentration and discipline those guys have, don't oh, they? they kind of, when they're, it's like they're really listening dynamically, mm. aren't they? So the, the band dynamically is yeah. always really hot in that it'd be loud and it'd be quiet in all just the right places and, and the sets will build perfectly. Mm. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot know, of craft. expertise, yeah. there's a lot of like, craft. attention to detail there. That, to, know, take takes, back, yeah, to take it back to yourself then, okay, you, you got, you've got a three-piece band when you play live. Yep. Most a lot of people over the years have said the three piece is the perfect combination. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I like the freedom of it because I'm like I have two great lads actually. I have Joe Farrell, uh, drummer, excellent drummer, and Gordon Sheridan, uh, who's an excellent bass player as well. So um, they they just uh, provide a really good foundation for me to just to be expressive. And because essentially you have the the rhythmical thing of the drums and the bass you know, is essentially a one-note instrument. It, it can't really do that much harmonically. Um, it leaves me kind of free to, uh, to play the changes when I'm soloing or not play the changes. If there was a, an instrument there, like a keyboard or something, it actually... Uh, restricts it mm. more because there's suddenly this harmony there that I have to kind of follow. Um, so in a way, like, you know, I suppose like taste and cream, there's that kind of openness where, and that happens on our gigs, it can go off on tangents and there's nothing set in stone and we are open to, uh, I, I you like, know, I like follow me, that. I, like the, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Listen, play us another tune. Okay. What are you going to do for us? Um... I was actually, the granny was going to come in actually, my wife, but she's, she's got six weeks until she gives uh, birth, so, <laughs> so I thought I'd give her the night off. So, uh, <laughs> so, <You're> so good. <laughs> um, so I think I'll do, I'll do another one off the album, that would make sense. I was going to do a cover as well, but I thought, no, why not, let's, let's do another one off the album. This one's called Blue Skies. Okay, all yours. So... Forever without a 
change in the wind So baby, hold on There'll be blue skies Baby, hold on Till they shine on through We rise again Something seems to change Now tomorrow brings A much better day, yeah We're no longer slaves to these To these chains and things And all we need is Is each other to breathe to be Stop on my account. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was nice. Thank you. Um, I think uh, as well, we got a better balance on the sound. We moved your amp to the far side of the That's room. It was pretty it loud worked, earlier. It on. was. Sorry it was that. a little, but we were being we were being enthusiastic earlier on. Yeah. Thank you so much. That that was really nice. That was really. I'd like to hear. Uh, you know you with a band or even with a bass and drums i think that's going to be a nice experience i think yeah are we rock though you know we're yeah. we're, a, we're a, we like to um we like to show people a good time give them value for money and that so uh yeah definitely come down to the the show in wheelands on the 6th of april that's uh that's going to be a killer show yeah nice one nice one and again you have this album out and you're kind of you're you're half promoting it in a way but you're promoting more through the gigs than anything else, right? Yeah, well, I don't really have a lot of channels to promote at the moment, I suppose. <laughs> I, what I have been doing, I've been going over to London and I've been doing some gigs with a, uh, I was, for a promoter over there called uh, Pete Feenstra and he's been giving us some gigs and we've been supporting the likes of Mike Zito. I, I was just going to come to that. I played, yeah. I played some Mike Zito a couple of weeks ago from his new album, which is rather good and I think it got to number one in one of the blues charts yeah, in the, in yeah, the States. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He, right. he really is. Yeah. And I was going to ask you how that came up. That you yeah, got to play well, I saw I saw a clip was posted on I think it was on 
somebody's Facebook page. Yeah, and I really I suppose, enjoyed that. I think that. it was about last September I started mitering people. <laughs> Say, give us a gig. And, uh, you know, some people just kind of stayed quiet and other people tentatively came back to me, like, why? Or, <laughs> you know, you know, all these kind of things. So, and I was saying, I, there's a promoter in England, I said, listen, I'll come over on my own. I'll pay for my flights. I just want to support these guys because I want to play directly at my demographic. I just mm. want to play at guys who love blues and rock and the kind of music that I'm playing. I don't want to be playing... Yeah, I just want to play to people who like that kind of music. So um, he, he, he took a chance and I, I came over and I brought a band over and we, we supported your man, uh, Ainsley Lister. And then we went, went back and we did uh, Mike Zito. And then a couple of weeks ago we did um, Lawrence Jones. Lawrence so, is, a, is a, a striking young talent. Yeah, he's amazing because he's yeah. player and uh, all round, all round, like super the, talent, isn't he? The only, the only thing I'll say, and I was talking to somebody about this, I was talking to Paul Burke about this last night, and Paul is actually the guy who asked me to check out your music. So, Paul, cheers to you for that. We were talking about Lawrence. And I, the comment I think I made, I think it was either to, to Paul or to Jerry last night, was everything is great. But in a few more years, his voice will be so much better. Yeah. He just has that... His, his voice is just a little too youthful for the blues. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right, yeah. But he's, he's a great player. I, I just, the pure volume of gigs that he's doing oh. is just bringing him, like... And that, it's just got miles in his legs. I used to do a lot of competitive cycling, so, you know, it's like the more miles you do on your bike, the stronger you're going to be. Yeah. And the more gigs, you know, he's doing, the stronger he's getting all the time. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, he's going to be, like... Uh, but it's funny you should mention Lawrence Jones and Ainsley Lister. You've got, you know, two sides of the coin. You yeah. Know, the established and the guy, the young pretender, in a way, coming through. Exactly. And yeah. there is, there's a really vibrant blues scene over in England at yeah, the moment. Yeah, and I, th I think when I... I, I decided to kind of go this route a couple of years ago. I, I kind of sensed it, that there was a, an interest in the blues again, you know, and there was an interest in, you know, old records, you know, vinyl was starting to come back and all that kind of stuff. It, there was something in the air where it felt all right to do it mm. now, you know. But uh, after going back to London, going to do those support shot slots in London, now it's... Um, you know, it's kind of paid off big time because we're going to do our own headline show now. Like, so those three investments of time and energy and self-financed kind of trips have, have now paid off where we're, we're going to be playing the Boom Boom and the, and the Beaverwood Club, these, these really cool clubs in London under our, uh, you know, uh, our own headlining spot. And then there's talk in um, April as well of possibly doing a tour with um, Albert Cummins. Mm. So um, Albert Cummins is a, a great blues, American blues mm. guitar player. He was number one in the in the blues Billboard charts in the states, and and then in September as well, there's um, possibly doing a tour um, with. Uh, quite a few years ago, they they used to launch a lot of the young blues artists by putting them in a three guitar package tour. Yeah, you know, the, uh, we did the girls with guitars and all that. Thing. Yeah, the, rough, uh, rough Records do a lot of that, don't they? They do, the yeah. German label, yeah. So I've been asked that to, to kind of do that in September, so that's hopefully on the cards as well, and that should introduce me to some regions, you know, where I, then I can go back under my own name. And, oh, absolutely. You know, and, oh. and that's what it's all, it's all about, just, you know, uh, building and just, you know, well, to uh, use grafting. Your, to use your terminology, you have to put the miles in. That's it, yeah. You have to put the miles in. Um, I'm, I'm really so pleased that you, you know, you have this great attitude. Like, you know, you probably gave up a good gig. You know, when you're talking about playing in West End stuff and playing mm. for other people and doing all that. And you probably walked away from it to do your own thing. Mm. And it's great to see that you still have the smile on your face and the glint in your eye. That yeah, you're, well, you're, it's, it hasn't frightened you yet. Well, I mean, it's um, it, it does get scary when you when you've got another baby on the way. <laughs> this is when num number two is during a few weeks, and I'm oh. but I you know I I keep myself afloat by you know um, you know I do a lot of guitar teaching and I have a lot of regular students and and that's that's really good fun. I'm out in Port Marnock, and. Um, that, that's really good fun, you know, like, uh, you can't complain about a job like that, you know, can you? Sitting there playing Eric Clapton solos all day, you know, so... Well, uh, like, I mean, you know, I, I can absolutely concur. I get played, I get paid to play, to play music, you know, yeah. well, it doesn't get any better, really, in many yeah. ways. Listen, give me the dates again. We've got Wheel and... You've got, go, go through them from Greystones yeah. on. For, um, next week, next Saturday, the hot spot uh, in Greystones, and then on the 19th... Of February, we're in Arthur's, 
Um, and then uh, Whelan's is on the 6th of April. So they're the three main gigs that we're, we're promoting at the moment. They're around and Dublin. Are you going to get out down the country? Yeah, we're, we're, hopefully we're going to be doing a, a, a new venue um, up in... in um, in Drogheda as well in May but you know the, uh, there's a lot of gigs pending and, and it depends on these two tours the Albert Cummins and the, and the three guitar tours well so I tell you you've got, there's some serious blues guys up in the Boyne Delta yeah that's yeah, right there, yeah. there are some serious there, blues guys there up there as well yeah, and some sure. really nice people as well yeah. um, great stuff listen because and I, I know Gronny will probably kill you if you don't and because there is a second baby on the way the album is available again. <laughs> That's right, yeah. MyBrookfield.com, Tommy and the Sound Cellar, um, uh, Tower Records, Dawson Street. They're the, they're the three reliables for picking it up. But, um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to play one more off the album. I want you to talk to me about this one. It's the second last track, and it's called All My Heroes Are Junkies. <laughs> okay. Well, I, this, this comes back to my racing days when I used to ride my bike a lot. And I, I, I was, you know, I got quite a good level. I'd, I'd do the Ross, you know, and, you know, uh, Ross Moon and Shore Valley and all these kind of big Irish uh, races and stuff like that. But um, so a lot of my heroes were cyclists as well as musicians, you know what I mean? Um, they all have one thing in common. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit of substance abuse kind of <laughs> run it thread running through all those people whether it's I don't know Steve Ray Vaughan or Pantani you know um, so I, I wrote a tongue in cheek tune uh, All My Heroes a Junkie one day and I, I kind of played it to a few people and they kind of laughed and they said that's great fun and I basically just looked at the faces and and that was enough for me to go, well, I, I should keep playing that. Yeah. Because if this song makes people smile and, you know, it has that kind of energy, then it's worth including, <laughs> you know, because you need that in your set. You need to put a smile on people's face and sell, send them on with a, you know, bit of rock and roll in the bones. That's the one. Mike, thanks so much for coming in. Well, thanks for having me, Pat. Lovely to meet you. And uh, keep in touch. And uh, hopefully, if there's anything we can do, we, we'll keep playing the album because I've, okay. I've enjoyed it so much. And... Uh, Thank you. Well, oh, thanks, Pat. Thanks, thanks, thanks for Pat. playing live for us. All my heroes are junkies. Tongue in cheek. Hmm. <laughs>
I can't work out why all my heroes are junkies. That was Mike Brookfield from Love Breaks the Fall, which is his current album. I could say debut album, but he's been around too long to call it a debut album. And it's available on his website. It's available in the Sound Cellar. It's available in Tower. And it will be available at the gigs. The big one to remember, 6th of April in Whelan's. And we have a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is look around and see. Hold on one second. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Okay, what I'm going to do is hit the button and do this. <laughs> 